Well, this is an exciting time and opportunity for me. This has been a long time coming. I've been a fan of our guest's music and his band for a long time called Striper. And today he's with us in studio and his name is Michael Sweet. Michael, it's great to have you here, great man. Great to have you. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Long welcome time to, no see. Yeah, well, <laughs> welcome to Canada. It's great to be here and um, mm. to actually have a few days to yeah. see some things and spend some time with you. And, and it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, because normally the band comes in, you, you do your sound check, your 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 show, then you're on the bus and off to somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. We usually, <laughs> wherever we go, we're we're in and out. I mean, we get in the day of the show, uh, nine times out of ten, and then we leave right after the show. So we don't get a, a, the opportunity to see where we're at uh, many yeah. times. But you know, on rare occasion when we do, we take advantage of it. Yeah. You know, if we go overseas or whatever, we get out and we try to see some sights and take pictures and videos and spend some time with one another out there. So, yeah. Well, I'm so glad you guys were able to come up, you and your wife and your daughter and friend, yes. and spend some time and see our lovely country. And making the time to come into the studio today, this has been something we've been talking about here at Huntley for a while. And uh, for, for people who may not know about Striper, uh, tell us a little bit about the band and how you guys you know, began, Michael. Well, we were all raised in musical families and on and off in Christian families. Okay. Uh, I came to know the Lord, my brother and I, my sister, my mom and my dad um, came to know the Lord through Jimmy Swaggart. Yeah. And, so um, how, how that happened? <laughs> Let me get comfortable here. Yeah. It, uh, it happened, believe it or not, just watching television. Like, I think it was my brother who first turned on television and mm -hmm. Jimmy Swaggart was on. And he was drawn to that and started watching. And then he got the rest of the family to start watching. And we were all watching Jimmy together. Uh, and wow, that's awesome. Yeah, after, yeah. you know, a, a short period of time, right in front of the television, believe it or not, mm. we accepted Christ. We believe that because we do that here at Huntley. You know, we always give people a chance to make a decision to follow Christ. Yeah. That's awesome that you came to faith that way. That's how we came to faith. And I was 12 years old. Well, well. So I was a kid. Uh, and <clears throat> unfortunately, because I was so young, in my particular circumstance, uh, I walked away. I, we got into a oh, church, and then, yeah. and then I wasn't interested for from, from the age of 13-ish to 20 wasn't real in okay. interested in going to church, you know. Yeah, so you knew about Jesus, but you just weren't living the life. Oh, yeah, Christ was in my heart, and I knew about it, and, yeah. and that the Holy Spirit was always tugging at my heart mm. whenever I was doing something wrong or whatever. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, w what happened was we just got into the whole uh, Hollywood club scene. Yeah. And with that, uh, you know, came a lot of the... <clears throat> the traps. The, the and, typical yeah. rock and roll lifestyle things that, you know, you hear about. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, thank God, at the age of 20, we had some friends that started, uh, you know, witnessing to us, sharing with us what God had shared with them and told mm -hmm. them would do with our band if we devoted it to him. And we did. Eventually. It took a while. Yeah. But because uh, we were reluctant, you know, and somewhat uh, in denial and, you know, certainly in a backslidden for lack of a better term, backslidden sure. state, you know. But yeah, so there you go. From 20, age of 20 on, that was 83. 83, okay. Uh, late 83. And from that point on, um, it's been nonstop for yeah. the most part. Well, you guys made a decision that you wanted to use the music as a means to get a message out. But you, you were one member shy in the beginning. And then quickly talk about how the band came together and what was that the journey like in those early days because you guys were pioneering stuff that nobody was doing before we we were well you know what's funny is we we never sat down and said let's pioneer no nobody Let, does <laughs> no let's do this let's be cutting edge let's try this no one's done it you know we ne we never did that yeah it still don't it never have mm -hmm. but what what was really unique with striper and what's really cool still to this day about the band is we were not a band that was raised in the church Right. A lot of Christian bands are, and that's great. Uh, you know, that's a calling, and that's that's a wonderful thing. And we were talking backstage about how many of those bands play Christian festivals, mm -hmm. and you know, they they're here more so for Christians, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Striper's always been more about being here for non-Christians, for yeah. people who don't know Christ, who can't relate to church, can't relate to sure. listening to a Christian band, going to a Christian festival, but they can relate to going down to the Whiskey A Go Go yeah. in LA and right. seeing a metal band. Sure. And then when they come see Striper, though, there's no compromise in the lyric. There's no compromise in what we do. No, not at all. No. 
uh, they, they get the word, but at the same time, there's a certain way that it's presented. So then Striper released, no, the yellow and black attack, soldiers under command, but then it wasn't until really 1986 where uh, the album To Hell the Devil came out, and that really yeah. went, went huge for yeah, you guys. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the one. I mean, we, we never really thought about, at least back in those days, mm -hmm. I never personally thought about, like, wow, are we going to have a gold record? Are we going to have a platinum album? Never thought about that. No. Like, to sell 100,000 copies, 150,000, which is what we did with Yellow and Black Attack, that was, that was huge. That was great, yeah. And we were blown away at what God was doing. But To Hell with the Devil, three albums in, when that came out, that went gold and then went platinum and then yeah. double platinum. And we went basically on that tour, we went from playing theaters around 2,000 capacity venues roughly to arenas okay. and playing in front of 10 to 12, so 14,000 people. changed at that point. It, it changed within a year, year and a half. Okay, now I got to ask, with a Christian band with the album title To Hell With The Devil, <laughs> what, what was that like in 86? <laughs> Well, you know, it was cool. Rob came up with that name, and, and that had, oh, okay. yeah, it, that had the, um, it, it, it had the power to make people on this side go, wow, that's cool. Yeah, to hell with the devil, you know, <laughs> yeah. And then it had the power to people on this side say, yeah, you know, we believe in Christ and not the devil, so exactly. Mm. And uh, Satan's going to be cast into, you know, uh, the, the pit for all eternity eventually yeah. someday and so it, it made sense to both sides but then we had we had the parents and we had the churches that you know it really caused a lot of controversy and they had an issue with it mm -hmm. uh, because they they felt like it was a swear they felt you know it, it some, was something right. the kids were getting kicked out of school for wearing tell with the devil shirts oh wow they'd be asked to go change their shirt and, and, and I mean we got letters from kids telling us mm -hmm. this Pretty amazing. And then uh, the other thing about it is it, um, we had a, a pentagram. There were four angels casting Satan into the right. pit and ripping a pentagram chain off of his neck and throwing it. So there was a pentagram on the album. Yeah, yeah. We had to change the album cover because of the controversy that, that created. Yeah. You know, it was for, crazy. Yeah, well, for all the controversy that it stirred, it got the band's name out there. It, there was a lot of attention. This is before social media and the internet. So it was, it was more difficult to get the message out there. It, it was really difficult to get the message out there. And uh, yet, in some ways, it was easier to get the message out there because what I mean by that is I feel like today's music industry is so inundated. In, 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 you know, there's so much going on, so many bands, so much music. And I feel that our attention spans have kind of shortened. Okay. So it's harder for people to focus on stuff. So it makes it a little more difficult to get the word out there. Yeah. If that makes any sense? Yeah, it does. But uh, I got to say, I'm so glad that you guys did get the word out there because as a 17-year-old, you know, who was into all the heavy metal and all the dark stuff, yeah. you know, I saw the lights in in a Striper song on Much Music, which was our MTV at the time. And, you know, today I'm a born-again Christian wow. preaching the gospel around the world. And I'm sure you've heard that from other people. We have, and it, it's amazing. That's, that must that's, be so encouraging. Yeah, that's the stuff that, you know, this is why we do what we do. And, and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, it's not about getting on stage and hearing 10,000 screaming fans or the, the clothes and all that stuff's fun. Mm -hmm. But when you hear stories about people who have devoted their lives to Christ and gone on to share and minister to thousands of other people, yeah. that blows my mind. And, and we have met over the years many people who have become pastors, uh, you know, who have written books, who have recorded yeah. music, started bands, successful. I mean, <laughs> it, it, unbelievable. So the, those are the seeds planted that are growing and taking root and reaching the masses. Yeah, you know, and it's it's amazing to see how uh, not just the music has changed, but also how the church's reaction has changed to bands like yourself. I mean, there's still people who would oppose, you know, combining, you know, rock and roll and the message of Christ. But right. I think, you know, people would say, you know, there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus. But there are many ways to get people to Jesus. And as long as we get people to Christ, that's, that, that, that's the main exactly. goal. Exactly. And obviously, I mean, there are some times, I'll be honest, there's some, some Christian bands that I listen to, and I think, wow, they're really Christian, you know? Because <laughs> it's so heavy, and it's so dark, and you, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. I don't know if, you, if you've ever experienced yeah. that. But uh, So I understand people's reservations when they, especially back in the day when Striper came on the scene, big hair, makeup, all this craziness that had never been done before. 
So I get why they would look at that and be shocked and think, wait yeah. a minute, how can this be of God? But at the same time, a lot of those people have embraced it, yeah. you know, and, and, and come up to us and said, wow, you know, this is, this is great. Sandy Patty was one of them back in the day, sat down with us and said, you know, I think you guys are great. What you're doing is unbelievable. Yeah. I'm a big fan and I support you. Uh, Pat Boone, you know, so many people That's that great. you would think might not su is support us or think, wow, what is this? They embraced mm -hmm. us and, and really got behind us. Yeah. Well, I feel like we just started talking, so maybe you can stick around sometime this week and uh, come back and talk to us a little bit more because yes, Striper is part of your journey but there's also been some post-striper experiences that we want to we want to talk about at a later time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's so much and and it's uh that's why I wrote a book and I still didn't fit it all in, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, well, we'll, it's crazy. we'll get to that, I promise. Thanks so much, Michael, <laughs> hey, for coming in and sharing. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You know, and for, for, for those of you who have been watching and maybe you've kind of grown up in that whole rock and roll world and, you know, you like the heaviness and all that kind of stuff, I would encourage you to go to striper.com. The website's there. And you got to check out the album that's coming out. You know, don't, don't judge the band because of the way they look or they sound. Read the lyrics. They're biblically based. They're solid. And I know that it's going to minister to you like it did to me so many years ago.